participants and the recording has begun. So we're gonna turn it over to our PTO president, Kyler Snow, for just a few updates. Kyler, don't forget to unmute yourself. Okay, technical difficulties right away. Um, on behalf of the whole PTO board, we were so um, happy to see so many people joining us last week, uh, last month. We had 75 people attend, and it looks like we're probably going to break that number this week. Um, what this is really showing us is that there is a need for parents to connect with the school and with each other, and we are going to do our best to continue that um, throughout the year and throughout these difficult times. Um, we will be making plans to bring back maybe some student speakers and some teachers um, in the meetings going forward because we know that was something that was really valued by the parents who were attending our meetings last year. And the, um, so just stay tuned for that. But I think we have some more pressing issues um, in these first couple meetings to deal with. Um, the other thing I wanted just to push is we've had 32 families pay their dues this year so far. Our goal is only 100 of the numerous families that are in our school to pay their dues. Please, 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 if you can, um, it's only $25 per family. All the information um, can be found in the membership form, which is located on the um, Daniel Hand PTO page of the Hand website. Um, we also, you know, Venmo is the easiest way to pay. I know last meeting when I mentioned this, we had people paying us during the actual PTO meeting, which I highly encourage. Um, and so if you can, if, you know, if you have the extra $25, um, please do pay it. We are looking to try to do some things for the staff to keep them motivated and happy and just to say thank you. So um, we do need the funds to do that. The other um, thing I wanted to just highlight again, like I did last time, is we do have a Facebook page now that we will be using as a conduit of information that affects the hand parent body. Um, it's also to give you reminders about meetings and other events. It's um, DHHS PTO Mad CT, but um, please, if you see it, like it and follow it. Um, and um, I think that's about it. So. Um, Yes. Well, anyways, thank you for um, your attendance. And as always, we're happy to have suggestions for speakers and topics. Um, our email is danielhampto at gmail.com. That's it. Thanks. Great, Kyler. Thank you very much. The next topic is probably one of the most pressing topics. Nurse Lesnick is excited to join us this morning to talk about upcoming out-of-state travel as it relates to COVID-19, as you've all probably seen from the interim superintendent's messaging. We've had some cases at hand. We have spent a lot of time over the weekend and during the school day as well doing contact tracing, and we make personal phone calls to any person who's possibly impacted. It is, I will say, I give the students and the staff a lot of credit here by following the expectations and the hybrid model works quite effectively. If we were all in and we had similar circumstances that we've been dealing with the last couple of days, I think the impact of the number of people who would have to quarantine would be much, much higher. So we are actually managing this quite well and we're still in person on the hybrid model, which I'm really excited about. So when Nurse Lesnick starts to talk her focus is truly on the expectations regarding out-of-state travel. I think most people know Thanksgiving is one of the most traveled holidays, and that, that creates a little bit of worry to say the least. This, if you have questions outside of the travel piece regarding COVID-19, I ask that you either give us a phone call or send Stephanie an email, because again, this meeting, we can go for hours probably talking about COVID-19. This agenda item is really specific to the travel, especially out of state travel, that is pretty typical in the holidays. So Stephanie, thank you for your time. Thank you, TJ. Um, I do like how you specified that this was supposed to be one topic because I'm gonna sneak in one other topic. <laughs> um, 10th grade and 11th graders do still need to have their physicals put in. Your state mandated physicals for 10th graders still need to be submitted whether your student is remote or in person. And additionally, we still have some outstanding 11th graders who never handed in their 10th grade physicals. So not to go off topic, but if I have a microphone, I'm gonna use it. Um, so if you could please get those in, we would appreciate it. Um, 
regarding travel restrictions for uh, COVID-19 as we enter certainly the travel season, but really just in general, if you are traveling to any state that's identified as a red state, a restricted state, which is pretty much everything um, right now, um, the recommendation by the Connecticut Department of Public Health is, um, and the governor's uh, executive order is that when you are returning to the state of Connecticut, within 72 hours of your return, you have a, a PCR test done um, and you quarantine until you have that result and have a negative result. And once you have that negative result, you are then out of quarantine. If you choose to not have a test done, you can just quarantine upon arrival for 14 days. Um, so people are opting to do both. There's a lot of testing being done. There's, um, you know, Bradley Airport, I'm told that you at baggage claim, you can get your uh, PCR testing done there. Specifically, it needs to be a PCR um, molecular test. It cannot be a rapid antigen test. There's a lot of confusion around the word rapid. Um, you will find rapid antigen tests. You will also find rapid PCR tests. So I do want to be clear that what we're accepting here and what the state is accepting for travel is a, a molecular PCR test, not an antigen test. Um, so uh, that's pretty much the outline of it. We do need documentation of any student returning to the building that they have a negative test prior to their return or that they've quarantined for 14 days. Um, I do ask that if you know you're traveling, that you please let us know in the health office or um, in the attendance line that you'll be traveling and I will walk you through it. I will help you find the paperwork for DPH if you need to. Um, I would rather, it's easier to know in advance so that we that there's no hiccups in your return, um, getting that documented. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to help. I'd rather help you preemptively than you know frantically afterwards when your kid is trying to get back into school. Um, my email is always available. My phone is always available. Uh, I'm happy to help. I think that's it, TJ. Thanks, Stephanie. Karen, you have a question? That's just for travel more than 24 hours out of state, correct? That doesn't apply if you're just doing a day trip and back within 24 hours. Karen, that is correct. It's a 20, it's 24 hours or more, correct. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Karen. So again, the, the upcoming holidays are exciting in one, in one sense, but we also create a little bit of anxiety and we want to try and stay in this model because we like seeing students and staff on a daily basis and hybrid is working at this point, keeping kids in the building and all of our extracurriculars are still going. So if you have any additional questions, again, feel free to reach out to Stephanie. She responds very quickly. And if you send me questions that are, you know, nurse related, I'll get the answer from her. I, I don't pretend to have that expertise. So thank you very much, Stephanie. I know you have another meeting that you must attend. So we appreciate your input. So switching gears, one of the things that we have been paying a lot of attention to is communicating to our student body as well as to now parents about the various levels of supports that are available at the high school. And we're, we're going to mix in support and then our plan for support into, I hope, a presentation. Let me, I just have to make sure I could work my screen effectively. Just give me a moment. I want to share a screen to make sure we're all viewing the same thing. So we're going to do a presentation that I would consider, it's quite extensive, and I, I think it's certainly going to be valuable. If you have any questions at the end, we won't be able to go through questions during just because of the presentation taking over the screen, but we're going to talk for a little while about the various levels of support and what we're doing as we move forward over the course of this school year, no matter, no matter what model we're in. And that means if we happen at some point to go all in, if we go all out or anything in between, we plan to follow this model that we've been working on. So we have two presenters today that are joining me, Lindsay Fiandella and Jennifer Hawley. Lindsay is one of our school psychologists and Jennifer Hawley is our school counseling program coordinator. They're going to take the lead on this presentation 
But first and foremost, I just wanted to share with everyone, because it's come to our attention, a lot of people aren't aware of this, that we have a pretty significant staff for support at Daniel Hen. If you look on the left, you'll see that we have six school counselors. Jennifer is in the mix of the six, even though she's also the program coordinator. We also have two school psychologists and we have two social workers. And that's a pretty significant level of support and they do some incredible work. So we've been paying a lot of attention to the needs of our student body by input they've given us. And we've also heard a lot of input from parents over time and our staff has been really incredible in sharing needs of our school. So when we move forward with this, we're going to talk about first and foremost, what each of these different titles of people do in our building. And then we wanna share our plan for moving forward with being able to support students no matter what model we're in. So I'm gonna turn this over at this point to Jen Hawley. Jen. Thank you. Um, yeah, so when asked kind of what our role as school counselors was, um, kind of a loaded question, I think our role changes on a daily basis and especially now um, with the pandemic, it's, it's even, you know, you walk in and not know what, what the expectations may be. So our role really is focused on the need of the students and again, that, that changes daily. So um, some of the things that I did think of that I thought were important that we do were, are listed here on the screen. And um, although things kind of look different, they may not be the same way we've done them in the past. Um, these we will continue to do um, for our students. So the first one being course selection. This begins in eighth grade. So we do go over to Polson to talk to our students. Um, we want them to know about high school classes, what choices they may have um, to make. We explain things like credits and electives, things, those words may be a little foreign to them. So we explain all of that. And um, then we also talk to our current high school students about next steps in specific subject areas and what may be appropriate based on interest and future plans. So we go into classrooms and, and do that as well. We're always reminding our students of the new courses that are offered here each year. And we explore many different possibilities while they're in high school. We want them to really explore while they have the opportunity to do that. We then um, also are still doing college counseling and post-secondary planning. Again, this looks different this year. Um, the process you know, changes every year, especially now with the pandemic and things look different for both us and the students. So, but we will continue to do this. Um, this year, we're gonna do a little bit different. We're going to um, create a video for our juniors and just have some general information on there about you know, AP testing and SAT testing and how to register and all of that kind of stuff um, to kind of eliminate maybe the larger meeting that we have. So we are going to post that for our juniors. We're also going to meet with our juniors individually or in small groups um, sometime after the new year. And it's really show them Naviance and how that works and what the college side of Naviance looks like, um, common application and all of that kind of stuff. Again, that's normally done in our, in our family um, parent guardian meeting, but we're gonna try to eliminate making that meeting so long and do some things with just the students prior to that meeting. And then starting sometime in February, we will start to meet with families virtually um, and discuss the actual process, the post-secondary process with the family and with the juniors. So again, those will begin in fe sometime in February. I mentioned Naviance as part of that um, college counseling piece and the post-secondary planning, and I'll also mention it as far as career exploration goes. But Naviance is a tool that the students use beginning in grade nine, and they will use that when we're doing our career exploration and developmental guidance lessons. Naviance stores student information, and from these lessons that we do with them, um, it'll store that information, maybe some of their interests, um, eventually schools that they're interested um, and then they'll again use it later on when they're doing the college application process. Um, these lessons are done each year with students and they're going to they change each year but each year we again do a little bit of exploration have the students see that there are endless possibilities out there um, and we just explore different interests that they may have during these lessons. Our counselors also do both individual and small group counseling Again, these look different this year, but um, we're certainly available individually, virtually. We meet with some of our students if they're remote learners or if they have a question on a day that maybe they're not here in person. 
So we meet with them and um, obviously in person as well if they have questions about anything. You know, we're certainly talking to students about difficulties with friends, with teachers, with families. Um, so it really depends and they're always knocking on our door and our doors are always open. Um, maybe we have to stay a little further in person now, but we're certainly available and they definitely are coming by. So we encourage them to do that. And as far as small group counseling, we don't do as much of this anymore because of space and um, proximity, but we are still going to try to do some things in the career center, like I said, with juniors. We will be meeting with all of our freshmen between now and Thanksgiving. We normally would have already done that, but um, due to just timing and who's here and who's not here, we're going to meet with them um, just to talk to them a little bit about transition and stuff between now and Thanksgiving. So that will be coming, um, those are all scheduled and that will happen soon. And the last two things listed on here, we are all members of the SST, the student study team, which will be explained a little bit later in uh, a different slide. And we are also the 504 coordinator for our students. We are program managers essentially for any students that have a 504 plan. We update the plan each year with the student and their family and a faculty member. And we continue to monitor the student and the supports in place to make sure that um, you know, everything is in place and it's working um, and we update that as needed. So those are some highlights of what we do. Again, we'll talk a little bit more, I think, later on about some other things that we're looking forward to doing as well. Okay, so we are fortunate enough in this building to not only have um, one school psychologist, but we have two. So we have 0.6 school psychologist, um, Jory, who's here three days a week, and I'm here the five days. Our role within the building on a day-to-day -day basis, as Jen said, it is changing every day, uh, but our our role is to provide direct support and intervention to students. Uh, we consult with teachers consistently, families. We collaborate on the outside of school with mental health professionals in the school as well as within the community setting. Uh, our role within the building is also to apply our knowledge in mental health, learning, behavior to help all students succeed. Um, as Jen said, um, the student study team is a team that meets weekly. Um, I have the opportunity to facilitate that and it's essentially it's a multidisciplinary team of counselors, administrators, support staff, interventionists, and teachers that collaborate weekly on how to support students in, in whatever kind of realm they might need, academics, uh, social emotional behavior, you know, giving them some executive functioning support. We kind of all brainstorm at that meeting how to best support students. Um, in addition to conducting assessments to determine eligibility for special education, we also provide scout, uh, counseling to students individually and in small groups. Um, you know, that is more kind of on a long-term basis for students when we see them in that domain. Uh, but we also can provide some more short-term skill-based support for students you know, for, you know, anxiety or depression or kind of those needs while also collaborating with outside professionals. Uh, we also can provide some support for executive functioning and really helping students identify how they learn and what kind of strategies work for them. And as we kind of know in this hybrid model, you know, what used to work for students and how they learned and how they really process information that they're receiving within the school is changing. Um, so this you know, this year alone is when we're seeing a lot of those kind of executive functioning needs and how we're supporting students to kind of identify within themselves and how to support teachers and kind of helping students learn. Thanks, Lindsay. So I'm up again. I'm going to talk about um, the role of the school social worker, um, who's Ben Schreiber. So Ben um, counsels students as well individually and in small groups. He has an open door policy for all students, as you know we all do. Um, students can drop in, you know, anytime they need anything. Sometimes counselors will come down and say, "Hey, can you check in with this student?" So that's something as well that Ben will do. Um, counseling for crisis intervention is always part of the job. Uh, consultation and collaboration with outside professionals and parents. Um, in addition to being a member of the SST team, Ben also serves on the Juvenile Review Board. This is a partnership between Madison Youth and Family Services and the Madison Police Department and to offer support to juvenile offenders as an alternative to the court process. Uh, ben is also a trainer for PMT in the district and that's a de-escalation method used with students to keep them all safe, the school safe and um, you know students themselves. Okay, the role of the Madison Youth and Family Services social worker, um, who in our building is Erin Corbett, and her primary role mirrors a lot of what Lindsay just said about Ben. Um, they're both social workers, so their role is very similar. 
but Erin does, um, so she does counsel our regular education students on a weekly or a monthly basis or certainly as needed when we're knocking on our door asking her to um, help us out with the students. So she's always available and really a great support in the building. She collaborates um, with our staff and parents as any of us do. She is also an SS team member and um, she is also part of our crisis intervention support. Erin also does a few different things though. She faci facilitates the drug and alcohol curriculum for students who violate um, the school drug and alcohol policy. So Jen's frozen. We're gonna give her a second to see if it comes back. Jen, can you hear us? Lindsay, you wanna take over this slide? Sure, no so Erin Aaron also um, presents to the freshman health classes regarding gender and sexuality. Uh, she facilitates GASP, which is the group that meets as of right now, they meet virtually every Friday. Um, and it's a large group of students that come together to support each other and to just kind of bring awareness um, to different genders and sexualities. Um, you know, I think a really key role of Erin's within our building is that she is a liaison between the school and Madison Youth and Family Services, which assists the community and assists families and students to connect them to programs and resources outside of the school building. Thanks for stepping in, Lindsay. Hopefully Jen gets okay. back. I'm back. Sorry. Right, great. No worries. Not your fault. Technology. All right, so as I believe everyone knows, we, we suffered a devastating loss of one of our students, one of our seniors a few weeks ago. And there's no words I could share that can just detail how significant a loss of a student is. And you know, we, I think we responded quite well. And I wanted to talk just very briefly about some of the things we did as a response to that loss and what we're doing as we continue to move forward as we're all dealing with this. So one of the first things we did, we had a Saturday support session mm -hmm. for students and staff. We had some students show up and a lot of staff. I thought it was a, a very valuable use of time. And from that, the school counselors and the rest of the support staff planned small group meetings with students. And over a couple of days, it obviously took a couple of days because we're in the hybrid model and we didn't have access to all of our students at once, we met in small groups by PAW and the support staff and school counselors, that's all one group in my mind, who are trained in these particular really important areas, you know, met with students and acknowledged the difficulties of this school year, including the crisis, which was the loss of one of our students. They discussed warning signs of suicide, they shared steps to take when a student was concerned about a peer or even concerned about themselves. They continued with an informal survey that you know, focused on students identifying adults they can go to if they, in addition to their parents if they needed any support. We reviewed coping strategies and current stressors and how we can help support them. The counselors followed up with individual students as necessary. If it was necessary, they also contacted parents. And the, as a result of these groups, some of the students found it to be quite valuable and were meeting regularly on an individual basis with students who really found that time to be quite valuable. So Jen, you're back, you're working, so. I am, I am back and working, hopefully. I, mine goes out all the time, I apologize. Um, so some of the input that we received from the students when we did those groups and also the counselors um, when, we're, when we're doing some individual surveys were that the students are having a very difficult time obviously learning in the online environment. Um, they are feeling overwhelmed also by the workload in most of their classes. You know, they're, on, they're online all day um, or, you know, when they're home and they are then have expected to do a lot of schoolwork afterwards and we understand that they're they're definitely feeling overwhelmed um, and they're also having a really hard time developing relationships with their teachers and because they're only here part part time and um, teachers are wearing masks they're just finding it hard to make that connection um, we don't realize how much wearing a mask I think impacts you know being able to see someone smile and things like that so I think the students are really missing that but that was the input that the students gave us um, those are the themes that we saw. 
Uh, so moving forward, we kind of all gathered together and, and just came up with different um, strategies and supports of how we can go forward with the school community. So we're going to talk about each one of these individually as we kind of move forward, but virtual counseling hours, Wellness Wednesdays, the pilot of that, which will begin tomorrow, uh, counseling resource, we have some outreach, some QPR training, which with the whole school is trained, and then review of curriculum. So the first one is the um, support staff virtual counseling hours, which um, I think the students definitely across the board have requested this and um, some students are just they have too many classes um, they're stressed out and they don't have you know nothing more than a half hour lunch break so we're offering hours prior to school starting and after school so from 7 to 7 30 and from 2 to 2 30 five days a week there is a support staff member available um, virtually so we have a Google Meet and a join code. We have posters around the building, uh, outside of all of our offices, and um, the school counselors, school psychologists, and social workers are all available um, each of these times to support students. So it's, you know, if a student is virtual that day, they're remote that day, and they're having a hard day, or they just want to check in with somebody, um, we're available before school and after school for them to do that. Obviously, as all students know, we're available all day. So again, as I mentioned before, they can connect with us at any time. But you know, this is before classes start um, or maybe at the end of a day when they're feeling like they, they need to talk to someone, we are available. Um, so again, these posters are around the building and it's posted, um, they were announced and it's also posted on our web pages. Okay, so Wellness Wednesday is in the pilot. Um, it begins tomorrow. We're really excited. It has the great potential and opportunity. Um, it will be from 9.30 to 10 o'clock every Wednesday. Um, it's in the hybrid model. Support staff will work with the in-person students in a designated grade level. And then the next week, support staff will work with the opposite cohort, same designated grade level. So example, so tomorrow we are working with grade nine cohort B students. And then next week, we're gonna work with the grade nine cohort A students. And you know, our really big goal is to kind of have it be focused on the connections of students and staff and to have some fun, community spirit, because while we're meeting with that smaller kind of population and designated group, the rest of the school has the opportunity to kind of connect in different ways with each other. Um, you know, so the, the LMC, the uh, dining and assembly hall and the bridge will be available and supervised. Um, classrooms will be open and, and kids can connect in those kind of ways. Um, you know, we're encouraging kind of that downtime because kids are saying we have no downtime so if you're home you know you get those 30 minutes at home to kind of you know maybe it means like going downstairs and like having a true break for yourself um, having a snack kind of going outside for a walk doing kind of whatever you need in that moment while you're home but also while you're here getting that different opportunity um, yeah, there's also going to be some different activities that are going on in the building that support staff and um, other staff members are are kind of putting out there to see if kids are interested in kind of attending. There is a focus on the mental health domain within the small groups, um, but our goal is to continue Wellness Wednesday in various learning platforms as necessary, um, whatever that kind of means as the year goes on. You know, masks and social distancing will be required during this time. It's not a time for academic support or any work. So this is truly a time to kind of disconnect and kind of connect in a different way. Um, so it's still in the planning phase. We have some you know, different ideas of what we kind of look like. Uh, we also have explored some speakers to come in depending on different grade levels and, and what would be relevant and supportive for students. Um, we really think it's gonna be beneficial for students, faculty and staff members and we're really excited to kind of pilot this and see where it goes. Great, Lindsay. And just to add a little bit on Wellness Wednesday, uh, right after school's over today, I'll email the entire student body with some more detail about what Wellness Wednesday will actually entail. Again, this is a pilot that we think could be incredibly beneficial for our entire school community. And instead of waiting to be perfectly planned, we're doing this starting tomorrow because we think we have a good plan in place. We are hearing more and more teachers getting on board with this and are starting to plan some activities like we have a department who's planning to invite kids to do like board games and connect with them. Our CT department, you know, there's very different courses from foods courses to robotics to stock market. You know, there, I'll email a few details for our students, but there's going to be some really, I believe, valuable opportunities for students to connect with our school community 
The administrators will also be available, but those communications will go to students this afternoon. And I, we have spoken to many students about this in the planning phases. And you know, although they're a little questioning what it will look like, a lot of them feel like it's going to be a good fit for what's going on in school. And like Lindsay said, we are planning to continue this no matter the learning model we're in. So we're excited for tomorrow. Yeah, and to add to um, Wellness Wednesdays, I think the staff also needs that half hour breather. So I think it's gonna be good for everyone to kind of take a step back and play a game or do whatever it is that we're doing. So I think, I think it'll be great. But as far as other counseling resources um, and outreach that we're doing, again, we are trying to reach as many students as we can. Um, and we want our students to always know that we're available both in person and virtually. So every four to six weeks, the counseling department has been sending out an e-notify um, for each grade level. So grades nine through 12, they went out yesterday. Just giving them some updates on things that are going on, um, things to look forward to, again that we're going to be meeting with the ninth graders soon that seniors you know college applications and things and and where they can find resources and with that they're also getting a google survey and again just kind of getting a pulse on where they are are they you know their stress levels and things like that what are they looking forward to we just want to know how they're doing um, a lot of the students are responding so it is great to read um, and, and to get some ideas from them and um, each counselor has also created a Google Classroom, again, by counselor and by grade level, where we will post different links, um, different supports, uh, messages, and things like that from the counselors, reminders, um, just to, again, another way to communicate with students. And um, we also have the virtual counseling hours that we discussed, so we are all available um, in the morning and afternoon based on that schedule that is posted and um, virtually at any time. And then the Student Support Service website is up and running um, and available. And Lindsay, I don't know if you could speak to that or where that's located. Sure, so it was just um, published yesterday. So it's on the general info tab on the Daniel Hand website. So it just on there has different resources for students, for parents, uh, different, um, you know, community resources as well. So different kind of um, things depending on, on different needs of, of students and families. Thank you. So QPR training. So all faculty was trained on our professional development day last week. Um, QPR stands for question, persuade, and refer. It is a suicide prevention program and it's similar to CPR. Here's what you do in the moment until help arrives. So um, we all received that training and then after the training we had a question and answer session with Madison Youth and Family Services. Um, it was it was very well received from the faculty. You know, it gave them language, it gave them wording, it gave them permission to ask questions and, and to, you know, refer and support students. So there is a discussion um, and we're trying to plan to train all staff members as well. Great, thank you both. Additionally, we have been reviewing the curriculum. The hybrid model presents its own challenges and our teachers are paying attention to what's in the approved curriculum and what they need to deliver to ensure our students are prepared to move on to either the next grade level or the college or university level and beyond. We are looking at what the focus on essential components of the curriculum to make sure we cover the essentials. Sometimes the extras that we may be able to get to when we're all in have to be skipped this year just because of the timing component and trying to stay paced appropriately in this new learning model. Some of the most common feedback we have heard from students who take a lot of AP courses or UConn courses is how overwhelming those courses can be. The workload's quite significant. We are following College Board and UConn's requirements. They're not recommendations. We are looking at ways to make those types of courses a little less overwhelming, but those are college level courses. Although a lot of people don't want to hear this, no matter the learning model we're in, those courses are going to be rigorous. There are certain expectations that are defined by other agencies. And we're, we're going to look at doing a better job communicating that to students and parents when we release the 21-22 program of studies, which will come out in January. Because again, those courses, a lot of our students enjoy those courses. They really enjoy the teachers in the AP sections and the ECE courses are exciting. The workload is quite significant and we are paying attention to that, but it is worth noting that again, College Board and UConn set the parameters for those courses. We're paying a lot of attention to the courses that are happening in our school that are created by 
our teachers and approved by our Board of Education. So moving forward, um, we plan to continue to gather um, any input that we can from students, faculty, staff, uh, parents, and guardians. And we will continue to meet as a support staff team regularly to come up with different ideas and um, again, monitor what, what people are, what the need is. And then we will cons consider implementation of Wellness Wednesdays, how maybe that will look um, when we're virtual, if we are virtual because we do want to continue these supports. We don't want to stop if, if that does happen. So we will continue to meet and continue to gather information from all of our stakeholders. As a reminder, uh, we you know, really have been empowering students that you are the eyes and the ears of the school. So we encourage you to encourage your child to contact any support staff member or administrator if they have questions, concerns about themselves, about others. You know, please come see us. We're we're here, um, as well as you know, you as parents. Please contact us with any concerns that you have about your child. Um, we are always here. We are always available, and we want to support in any way that we can. Great, thank you, Lindsay and Jen. At this time, I'm going to end the share. And if anyone has any specific questions related to what we're doing regarding the supports and Wellness Wednesday, for example. We would be happy to try and answer them. We're, again, we're in the pilot phase, which means we're going to learn from any mistakes we make. As we move forward, we're going to gather a lot of input from our students. And again, the more our students are hearing about this, there's been some good energy around it. And we're hoping it will be really a positive experience for our entire building, not just the students. And if you're wondering, you know, it's a 30 minute window every Wednesday, what happens to instructional time? We have a schedule devised that we think is really appropriate. It, the impact on each class is only a five minute loss of instructional time. So it's instead of a 62 minute there's period, there's 57 minute class period. So it's not going to have really any impact. And we think that the pros far outweigh any of the cons for this experience that we're excited again to start tomorrow. I would tell you very honestly, because that's always my approach. We're probably not fully ready to start tomorrow but we're going to do it anyway because we think it's good for kids and I think it's going to be a really good experience and we're going to gather a significant amount of input from our students over this experience. And I hope we're not doing it in the virtual world only. At this point, it's exciting to have the opportunity to work with in-person students as well. So any questions on these particular topics, we'll happily try to answer if you want to think about it for a little while feel free to email Jen, Lindsay, or I, and we'll happily respond pretty quickly. But again, we are looking forward to this. And if your son or daughter or your child has no idea about this yet, they will get an email from me around two o'clock today with a lot of detail and the schedule for tomorrow as well. And again, we're looking forward to that opportunity. I had a quick question. I don't know, should we just talk? Jump in. Sure, okay. just talk. Um, under, hi, I'm Paula. Under Wellness Wednesday, it was mentioned Google Classroom um, by grade level. That was one of the presentation points. How would that work? Um, is that part of Wellness Wednesday? They will do it by all seniors, or is it by just the classroom, by PA? Um, I wasn't sure what that would encompass, because that would be great for seniors. Mm -hmm. The Google Classroom, I know I mentioned as far as the counseling staff, um, we each counselor has created or is creating by tomorrow um, a Google Classroom for their counselees. So, um, for example, Mr. Hines has a grade 12, a grade 11, a grade 10, and a grade 9 just for his students. So he'll be updating that um, regularly with different information um, for the appropriate grade level. Is it with students supporting other students or is it one-on-one? -on -one? That is for the classroom. It's just resources that are available to the students. So it's um, it could be, you know, it depends on who logs in and if they have questions or anything, but he's certainly available one on one um, virtually okay. as well. So it's or an, open for, an open forum where right, it's a classroom where there's resources okay. available like a, a classroom would be for a teacher. Okay, thank you. Karen, is your hand up or is that a leftover hand up? That's a leftover. All right, no worries. 
So we'll share a lot of information about how we make out and any revisions we make. I ask that you ask your, especially if you have a freshman tomorrow, they will have direct involvement. But I think the grades 10, 11, and 12 students will have a good half hour as well tomorrow. I'm looking forward, you know, I'm assigned to the dining and assembly hall. So I'm looking forward to being able to talk with some kids and just check on how it's going and answer any questions or concerns they have. A couple of shorter topics on our agenda that we just wanted to make the parents of our school community aware of. We have student announcements. We have a little different process now that works very effectively on school issued Chromebooks, but for a communication piece for parents as well. I'm going to figure out how to share my screen one more time. Just give me a moment. And I wanted to be sure everyone was aware of a new process that we have that's proven to be quite effective already. And if I share the screen, if you see, this is our danielhand.org website. If you go to the hyperlink just titled students and click on students, you can see on the right hand side, it says DHHS daily announcements. And any one of the dates, and you could load more if you're interested, if you wanted to see what the announcements were, on November 6th, you could click on this and it gives you the detailed announcements that the students heard if they were in person, but it also gives the students who are in the hybrid model or remote only model access to the different, different announcements that happen on a daily basis at Daniel Hand. We have heard for a few years now, you know, that we had to come up with a process to share our announcements and Central Office has worked wonderfully with our administrative assistants here, and that's up and running and is quite effective. Again, students have access immediately on their Chromebooks to that, but from a parent's point of view, it's literally two clicks. You know, danielhand.org, click on students, and then you could see all the announcements. A couple of other just quick updates. Winter sports, you know, kind of a big topic right now. You know, we are actually in the final week of fall sports. I, if you asked me in August if I thought we'd play any fall sports competitions, I probably would have said no. So the fact that we have a few teams remaining in the playoff week, which is a little different week of playoffs, will wrap up by this Friday. Winter sports, a little more questionable just because they're inside. If you have heard recently, Governor Lamont released a statement and he he said quite clearly, no high risk sports will be allowed to take place for the rest of 2020. So it's about two months, and then I'm sure that will be reconsidered. High, high risk sports are wrestling, boxing, 11 on 11 football, rugby, boys lacrosse, martial arts, competitive chair and dance. Medium risk indoor sports, that's a big chunk, almost all are considered medium risk are going to be considered to take place, but the expectation is all the participants, our student athletes, are going to have to wear masks the entire time. That's created quite a buzz in the, you know, in the Connecticut community right now about what that will look like, but we don't know exactly what's going to happen yet. The CIAC has a meeting scheduled on November 17th. The focus of the meeting is with their board of control and their medical board to give their recommendations for which winter sports will be approved to move forward. Once that information is shared, you know, school districts will get to review that. We have a COVID-19 advisory committee that will review all of the recommendations and then they'll decide on a start date. A few weeks ago, the winter sports season was actually slated to begin on November 21st, which is really early. That date has been postponed because in one sense, the spike in COVID-19, but CIAC also moved their review date to November 17th. That would never give school districts enough time to start a winter season on November 21st. So we're anxiously awaiting the input from CIAC that should come either on or soon after November 17th. We will communicate that all very clearly to the school community about where we stand with winter sports. Winter sport registration already has begun. If you registered for a sport and that sport doesn't take place, you get an automatic refund. So there's no issues with the financial side. I will say, you know, I'm crossing my fingers that sports and all other extracurricular activities will continue in the winter months because in my opinion, 
done right, they're really good for kids. We've had kids enjoying, again, competition in athletics. We've had kids enjoying playing in the marching band and flag squad in front of a small audience at the surf club. Our orchestra did an incredible performance with no, perform or no audience allowed. We have a chorus and show choir concert planned. Again, no audience allowed. And Mr. Gage is already working on a jazz band concert later in December. We're hopeful all of these things continue and you know, we're looking forward to that you know, as we move forward. So Karen, is that a new hand? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I knew how to put your hand down, I would, but I don't want to disconnect you by mistake. Jenny Doyle, I see you have a hand up. Is that accurate? Yes. Um, I just had a quick question. I don't want to go off on a huge tangent, but with all the new cases and quarantines going on, are we, um, I just want to verify, because I know they're supposed to be recording the classes. If the kids are being quarantined or aren't going to be there, but I had heard that not all classes were being recorded. So I just wanted to just see where we were on that to make sure that that is actually happening. No, great question, Jenny. I will say we're supposed to be. I think it's easy for a teacher to forget. Like I actually wrote a big note at the beginning of my agenda today that says record this meeting because it is simple to forget. I will send a reminder out because it is supposed to happen and for the kids who miss classes or the kids who are quarantined, I mean, they always could remotely join in, but that access to a recorded class is incredibly beneficial. So I'll send a reminder to staff today. That's a really important piece. So great question, thank you. So again, I'll send some updates regarding sports as soon as we have them. And you know, in the big scope of things, I think we are really managing this quite well. And again, to have a fall season getting to its last week, I'm excited for that opportunity for our kids. And the other performances, like I didn't even mention the fall play, you know, they're working on their performance and there will be a recording of that sent out to our entire school community. So kids are participating. Last but not least, I believe on my agenda for today was just some quick updates on the class of 2021. It's certainly the senior class always is a topic of discussion because they have the most activities. It's their last year in public school. We want to make sure they have an enjoyable year. I will say, you know, we, we planned two picnics. We had the absolute worst weather ever on the first two days they were planned and we kept our fingers crossed and we had probably the best two days ever the following week. Our seniors seemed to really enjoy it, the picnics. Half of them didn't want a picnic because it wasn't the exact model that the other classes have had. The feedback I received from students and a few parents was really positive after. They all enjoyed it from what we can tell. And we're hoping to offer this class of 21 similar experiences, keeping in mind the restrictions of COVID-19. With that being said, just as an informational piece, I did form a class of 21 committee that has administration, teachers, as well as several parents of, who have kids in the class of 21 that will meet on a monthly basis. I did this last year at the end of the year because COVID didn't impact us until March. And we talked about different things we can do to ensure the senior class went out on a really positive note. So we have a great committee. We've already met once. If you have any questions or concerns about COVID-19's impact on the class of 21 and what we could do and what we should do in your opinion, I'm going to ask you to email those to Mr. Bodner. He's on the committee. He is also the administrator for the senior class. And we will bring any of those discussion points or considerations to this committee on a monthly basis and then communicate it out to the class of 21 students and parents as we move forward. So that was something we put in place last year. I found it to be really effective. As we get closer to the end of the year, similar to last year, I will add students from the class of 21 to that actual committee because they were really invaluable in helping us plan some different but still special end of the year events last year that the class of 2020 seem to appreciate considering that we're living still in a pandemic. So I did want to give you that update because I do think it's important. Again, all four grade levels are really important, but keeping in mind the senior class, this is it for them. You know, this is their last year in high school and it seems like COVID-19 has the potential to impact their entire school year as seniors, which is quite different from the class of 2020 that it impacted just from March and beyond. Still significant, but it wasn't the entire school year. So 
Again, if you have questions or things you would like us to consider in regards to the class of 21, just email Mr. Bodner. We'll share with the committee. We won't share your name. So if you want to keep that confidential, we'll just share the topic. And we plan to start communicating the outcome of those meetings with the class of 21 parents and the student body while we gather input from the students as we move on over the course of this school year. So that covers all of our agenda items. If you have any particular questions about any of the topics we covered, I'd love to answer them now. If you have other topics, as most people seem to be pretty comfortable doing, and that's a compliment to everyone, feel free to send us an email. I do think we respond very quickly. And if we don't know the answer, we will find it out. I would ask from a parent's point of view as well as a student's, you know, check the communications from the school as often as possible. You know, the superintendent does communicate regularly about what's going on with schedules as well as now the impact of COVID-19. But we also like to send out the good stuff, you know, about the things we're doing in our school that are good for our school community. So a quick reminder to your kids to check their emails. I know it's not it's not the most favorite thing of a high school student to do to check email, but we are trying to keep that communication up and running. And our student body, again, has been great over the course of this school year. And I'm still very pleased that we have students in the building on a daily basis. So I do, this is our record. We had 86 people in attendance this morning. That's pretty awesome. At the end of this meeting, the whole recording will upload to my computer. I will email it out to the entire school community as soon as that's done, because I do think there was a lot of valuable information today. I genuinely appreciate your time. And again, if you have any questions that you don't want to ask in a public setting, especially when it's being recorded, feel free to reach out to us privately. And thank you all for your attendance and have a great rest of your day.